try this again. I want this to be a raucous, nasty, mean press conference. Hi, everybody. What's up? Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Who, what was that? What does that mean? It's Greek. It, and what does it mean? You're an asshole? What does that mean? What does it mean? Oh, like, a, like, hooray. Teach us. Opa! 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 All right, that's good. All right, we did good. All right. <laughs> now, look, that's how I want this to go, all right? Um, it's our 35th anniversary. Yeah! somebody that lives in the moment and doesn't worry about the past and for me okay I, I didn't even know it was 35 years had gone by but outside the guitar that I got the orders to start this company is in that case if anybody steals it I'll come kill you <laughs> what <laughs> watch it <laughs> so um, when I see that I get nostalgic uh, about what's happened, and um, I feel very appreciative. I wanted to thank everybody for coming, um, and we've decided as a company we're going to celebrate this 35th anniversary with a bunch of guitars, four guitars specifically, and we have uh, what we call our core line. So the word core comes from the core of your being like if you abandon the thing you started with you'll lose your company so we call it our core and that's what's over here we have a 35th anniversary custom 24 core guitar in s2 which was the reason we built the new factory so we could offer you an extraordinary maryland built guitar for half the money we have a 35th s2 custom 24. in our se line which are the guitars that are made under our direction, but not in Maryland. We have a 35th SE Custom 24. And then we have a private stock guitar. And uh, that, that sounds like Animal House, be careful. You guys aren't even laughing, there's feedback in the movie. All right. Anyway, let's put the difference, Rich. So, can you turn it up a little bit? So, um, we've done nine dragons. And the first dragon that we did, I had this idea of putting this English water dragon on a fretboard and literally the sales department refused to sell it. That's a bad idea, Paul. Now, now we've sold 135 of these in one hour. And I want to show everybody the guitar. It was drawn by Jeff Easley, who's from Dragonlance, Dungeons and Dragons fame, and Paul Miles and, and uh, Jamie Olson uh, and I and a bunch of other people went out the drawing to make it an inlay. It is our 35th anniversary dragon by Private Stock. It's not just art, it's an instrument that plays. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a tremendous amount of work in this beautiful instrument. And for me, I don't want to just make a piece of art that ends up in a museum. I want to make a guitar that works and plays. So I'm going to play it for all y'all. coming out it has this nice mid-range and the high I mean you could argue about what's best the high end the mid-range or the bass that would be a good guitar right so I don't want to just make guitars that are art I don't want to make things that are just that are beautiful I want to make instruments that you can't keep your hands off of and so the only guitar I'm going to play in this press conference is this one but this is the dragon and they're all sold and we're done looking at this thing so here we go fair enough everybody yeah. So we're starting to put this double switching system on. 
our guitars. And let me explain what that is. We put two switches on the guitar to make them single coil. And normally what happens in our industry is you just ground the wire in between the two coils and that's how you get a single coil out of a humbucker. But it sounds like an anemic humbucker. It doesn't really sound like a beautiful single coil. And we figured out that when you completely disconnect the other coil and you do some other things with the switching system and tune the coil right way, it sounds like a beautiful single coil. So there's a pause guitar here. <laughs> And these are the switches, and we're starting to stick them on all the guitars. So you don't just get a uh, a single uh, a sing a humbucking guitar with a uh, a single coil pseudo sound. It actually sounds beautiful, like a, uh, an old uh, single coil guitar from the 50s. And we're putting that on a lot of our guitars. And we it, I, we just started to call it this double switching system. And the other thing is when I played the Dragon, those are beginnings of our new TCI pickups. TCI pickups stand for tune, capacitance, and inductance. So let me explain. If you have a Neve console that you're recording music on and you click it to 3.5K and you're turning the 3.5 up and down, the way it gets 3.5K is it puts an inductor and a capacitor in series and the thing resonates at a note, like a whistle, and you're turning the whistle note up and down. We figured out how to do that with the pickups. So those those pickups that I just played you, we tuned that high-end note just where we wanted it. We tuned that mid-range note just where we wanted it, and we tuned the bass note just where we wanted it. But the thing that you can't really control very well is how loud is the bass note versus the treble note. But I had it exactly at the dB that I wanted it from what you just heard. And for us, that's a really big deal. And you know, this whole double switching system and TCI pickups are right in all these 35th anniversary guitars. Now, it's not well known, but PRS has grown almost 60% in the last three years. And that comes with a lot of hard work. You think the rebuilding of this booth just happened? I mean, Judy and her team worked really hard to make this what it is today, you know? Um, it also comes with your acceptance of our products and the market's acceptance of the products. Very often, a product will come to NAM and you never see another one. Or a product will come to NAM and you'll see them for the rest of your life, you know? And for us, we want that market acceptance. And if you, if you as a whole didn't accept those new products from us, we wouldn't be here. So I, I want to thank you for that. But in that, there's been a love for the products. Um, and which I, you can't ask for, but it happens, I don't want to acknowledge it. But over that three year period, there's been over 20 new SE models. Um, we've got two hollow bodies this year. There's a mirror and a Starla. There's uh, a guitar that has exotic veneer on. Let me show you one of those. That's an SE guitar. And we're doing it with a veneer, but that's fair if uh, the guitar sounds and plays beautifully and has the new pickups in it and all that stuff, it's just fine, right? Um, we also have a Mark Holcomb seven string. Now Mark isn't here today, but I wanna speak for him. He adores this thing. And there's a seven string, he's using them on tour. He's using them in the studio. Bev, he loves this thing, right? So, I mean, you know, right? And we're releasing this as well. But there's been over 20 new models, and we have a 35th anniversary SE as well. So, not yet. What is that? 35th anniversary SE. <laughs> so he wants, this is Rich Hannon from our Earth's Relation Board. He wants me to show you the, the, the SE uh, uh, 35th anniversary. It's a beautiful guitar. It'd be kind of hard to know whether where it was made just by looking at it. You're going to have to look at the logos on it. We're getting very close with this stuff. And Jack Higginbotham, who has done an unbelievably good job uh, with Doug Scheib growing this whole SC line, should be very proud of it as well. So we've made a big change in Maryland. And that is that we've switched the entire finish system over to a different paint. So let me explain. In the 50s, they would take nitrocellulose lacquer and they would mix a, a, a powder with it so it was easy to sand. And, and then 
Gibson, it's not well known, but in the winter time, Gibson would have to wait to ship the guitars if it wasn't cold because they would crack on the way and they would send the trucks to the southern route so the guitars didn't crack. So there was this problem with the finishes cracking. If you get an old guitar and a finished guitar that hasn't cracked, you don't want it. But if I ship you a cracked guitar, you kill me, right? So this whole thing with nitro is a complicated game because you have to add stuff to it so it doesn't crack, but you want it still to be crystalline, and it's not so easy to do. And so we've converted our finish system at PRS almost entirely over to uh, a, a, the same thing that Fender used in around 1964. It's a slightly catalyzed base coat and a nitro top coat. And these guitars that are in the room that are in core and in S2 are all this new finish. Most of these guitars, I'm going to show you this new finish. It's not so easy to take a big ship that's making 100 guitars a day and, and change your system over. But we've done it, and we're proud of it. And I wanted to, to mention that to everybody. To that end, we we changed the finish system over slowly, also over on John Mayer's guitars also, because that's something that's made. And we just got done working with him for over a year on a maple fretboard Silver Sky, which we are releasing today. So how many orders have we gotten on this thing already? Is it already a thousand, right? It's over a thousand like a day. I like when John lifts his little finger and we get a thousand orders. So to that end, this is called a nebula. And we sold all these, right, Bev? How many were there? So we sold 500 of these in another minute. And what it happens is it's a, called a flip-flop paint in the car business, where you, as you change the direction, it changes the color that it is. It's not so easy to do in nitro. It's not done normally with nitro. It's usually done with acrylic urethane. And this was a tremendous amount of time and energy put into these things. It's an incredible value that you can get these kind of trick car paint on a guitar for only a hundred bucks more. And we're really pleased with this and we've sold them all. Now that doesn't mean they're sold. What that means is we have an order for 500 of them. We still have to make them. Then the dealers still have to buy them and then you guys have to take them from the dealers. So this is the beginning of the process. So is there a Dusty Waring guitar here? I mean, And so Dusty is here. Dusty, come on up. Everybody Dusty Waring from the Waring. So this is what your guitar was supposed to be, right? Yeah. OK, but this is, I don't know, what is it, raspberry-ish? Yeah, plummy. 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 Yeah. OK, but you're using a different color now. So I've always had this uh, idea for a very stealth guitar with the natural back. And this is the one I'm using the most right now. But it does come in five colors. So we got the, the wearing burst. We've got the black top. We've got a nice blue smoke burst. There's a, actually an amber smoke burst back there that you can check out and uh, the gray-black, which was the original, one of two of the original colors. So these things have Floyds and bolt-on necks, but it's the first black bolt-on we've ever done, right? Yeah. Satin neck, satin paint, so it's very fast. Um, and we actually, we changed the inlay to the solid birds, which I really prefer. And now we're using these big, kind of old-school stereo knobs they're, they're heavier and they don't go down when, you know, sometimes you may notice that when you're playing live, you may lose 20% of your, your volume just because you're playing really hard. But these are kind of heavier, so they don't really go anywhere. So how much touring are you going to do this year? The whole year is already booked. Um, I'll be out the majority of the year, but I've got about three years of touring already on this model. Um, and I couldn't be happier with it, you know. It's very, very stable, and uh, it's pretty much anything that we could have improved with the guitar we have. So where it stands right now, it's, I wouldn't change anything about it. So the way it works is that he'll come to us 
or an artist comes to us with a bunch of ideas, whether it be you or John Muir or Carlos Santana, whoever it is. And we work and we work and we work on it. And we worked on this for three years, right? And when we finally release it, it's unacceptable to PRS and unacceptable to you if you're not using the thing all the time. You don't want to put your name on it and be, and be getting a, a royalty on it and not use it, right? Yeah. We, want him, we want him using the guitar because he loves it, not because he's getting paid to, to love it, right? Yeah. And, and to me, that's a really big deal. Yeah. And you've done an extraordinary job for us. It's an honor to have you here, Dusty. And I think you did a great job being a guitar designer on this one. Good job. Thank you. Everybody, give Dusty a hand. So we did something on different for us. We, instead of releasing a whole bunch of new McCarty models, we changed all the features of the guitar and left the model the same. That's a, that's a new experiment for us. So this is the new McCarty, but it's, it is and it's not. It's the same tooling, but we changed the tuning pegs to be lighter weight. And, and, if, and I can tell you that when you make the weight on the headstock lighter, it changes the note that the note that the neck has, and it changes the sound. We changed the nut to bone. We changed the pickups to these new TCI pickups. We changed the bridge to have these brass inserts where the string starts to vibrate. Um, we changed the finish to the new uh, nitro finish. We did all that stuff on this. And this was done to the McCarty. It was done to the 594s. And it was done to the single cut 594s. And all the guitars now that are being shipped are of this new thing. If you have an old um, one on order, we're, we're, we're changing everything over on the McCarty line. And, and for us, uh, it's a very big deal. Now, one of the things that happened was when we were doing this McCarty, people said, well, can you do one for half the price? And you know, my eyes rolled, because I like, I like private stocks, you know. But I know that I'm in a position that's not the same as everybody in the world, and sometimes money is an issue, right? So we made an S2 version of it. Wow. Yeah. And so you can get S2 single cut 594s, you can get S2. Uh, thin line ones, what this is, you can get the regular 594s in S2, and then you can get the ones that are made in core. So what S2 stands for is Stevensville 2. So that is our town that we live in in Maryland, and we named it the second guitar of Stevensville. That's basically what it stands for, right? And now you can get 594s and McCarty's with, in two completely separate price points with the same neck shape, the same carbs, the same people making them. And the more and more and more we do this, we try to have everything come down the same line. So a John Mayer comes down the same line as a, a, a artist pack guitar, right? Now, this is kind of weird. We are backward eight months on average. Some guitars, we can't stop the orders coming in. We have a year back order on S2s. When we have um, uh, our core line is back ordered, what, 10 and a half, 11 months, something like that. And so people have been very patient to get their guitars, but you gotta, you gotta think of, we're st even when we're making over 100 guitars a day in the Maryland factory and there's 150 guitars coming out of SEs, it's still not filling the pipe. This is our time. And I can't tell you how appreciative I am of that. I can't tell you how appreciative I've been with the dealers. I can't tell you how appreciative I've been for the distributors and our customers, our artists. Everybody's been helping. It used to be, in the old days, it was a box and 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 a box, and we would ship boxes, and the UPS truck would back up. Now it's pallet after pallet after pallet after pallet of guitars. And for me to try and keep all the quality control parameters uh, straight now, which we're doing a really good job. I mean, everybody goes, well, if you grow, you're going to ruin them all. Well, no, that's not what's happening. What's happening is they're all coming out beautifully. And I wanted to thank everybody here, all the press, um, for their part in this 35th anniversary. And um, I think that's really cool. Now, there's a lot of people in this booth, and they have given my band, the two o'clock slot downstairs to play for the food trucks. 
So I'm going to blow out of here in a little bit to go introduce the band. And I, and I want you guys to give me the allowance to be able to do that because uh, these musicians have come here to, to help keep the time slot. So eventually we'll be able to play down in those big stages at night. That would be good for us, right? So that's going to happen. So anyway, if everybody could give a big hand for Dusty Waring for coming, I really appreciate it. If you could give Judy Schaefer and her whole team a big hand for an extraordinary job of doing this book. And Deb and Rich from our artist relations department, there are pictures of artists that we deal with every single day. John Mayer called today just to find out what was going on in him. He wanted to know. He was on tour, he wanted to be a part of it, which was beautiful. Great job, Ben. Thank you very much. So it's a press conference. Does anybody have a question that actually would mean something to this whole group that if I answered? Now you said no. Then you should ask the question. So is there, are we all cool with all that? All right. From the bottom of my heart, everybody, thank you very much. It's our 31st anniversary. Let's have some fun. Thank you. Very much.